Welcome back guys. <laughs> Sorry, little technical problem. There's going to be a part two to this video. <laughs> Anyways, we're talking about Tony Ferguson and Paddy Pimblett. And like I was saying, Paddy Pimblett, likable guy, UFC wants this guy to win. They, they put him up against uh, Gordon last time. And uh, they're trying to, every fight they were trying to move him up a little bit slowly, slowly, slowly. But you know what? They just realized that this guy has a ceiling and Gordon was the ceiling. Gordon beat this guy. It was obvious. He was in it. He was in uh, the UK. They, they, they robbed Gordon and gave Pimblet the decision. This it wasn't a good, everybody knows it, you know? So the UFC is now panicked. We're like, oh man, we barely got away with that one because they want to keep this guy in the, the spotlight. You know, they're, they're making a lot of money from him. So what do they do? Well, they're not going to move him any further forward. They know that this guy was lucky to beat Gordon. So that's kind of his ceiling. So what do they do? They look back. They look back. Who are we going to get? Well, Pimblet's what? Number 22? Let him, let him fight the number 33 guy, Ferguson. And Ferguson, he's got a name. So everyone likes Ferguson. He's got a good reputation. People think still think he's a good fighter, but he's number 33. So think about that. Pimblet is fighting somebody who's number 33. I mean, so much for moving up the young prospect, right? Um, so they're kind of put the brakes on, eh? They did a they did a U-turn on that. They did a, what's that? A British U-turn. <laughs> um, so I'm, I mean, Pimblet's gonna he's he's he look he's five foot ten, but he's a big five foot ten. He's strong. He reminds me of Juice. He takes a lot of punishment. He can take people to the ground. He likes to strike, but his head just stands out there. He's there to be hit, but the guy is a big, strong kid. And he can, he's young and he can he just absorbs all of it. Um, that's the thing. He's like a young bull, but he's, he's not that talented. He's okay. Um, obviously, probably not more talented than where he's ranked now. Anybody he fights above, he's going to lose against. Tony Ferguson, I mean, he used to be really strong, but now he looks like punches really affect him. He fights awkwardly. He doesn't doesn't seem really effective. And I really want to bet on Ferguson. And here's the thing is I think Pemblet's going to win. It's a set-up fight for him to win. Can turning forward, Ferguson turn it around and uh, look like he did a couple of years ago and not like he did last year and possibly win this? Maybe. I mean, we're not, even though Pimblet has shown some talent. He's not super talented. Um, Pimblet's going to be the pick. I've got it on a low confidence scale. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I want Ferguson to win. Maybe I want him as a big underdog like last time against Green to pull this off. Can he pull it off? I don't know. Um, he's got, I mean, he just worn out, unfortunately. Not talent-wise, he's just worn out physically. But He's talking a good game, and if you listen to him talk, you think he's going to win. So, low confidence pick, Paddy Pimblett. Ferguson, does he have a chance to win? Yes, of course he does, because he's a veteran. There's something that he can do, possibly, yes. Um, maybe I'm doing it with my heart, I don't know. So, Pimblett's going to be the pick, very low confidence, because I still think there's a path to victory for Ferguson, even though I think he's worn out. Moving on, Shafkat Rachmanov versus Stephen Thompson. Shafkat Rachmanov, six foot one, seventy-seven inch reach, seventeen wins, zero losses, zero draws. Twenty-nine years old. Stephen Thompson, six feet tall, seventy-five inch reach, seventeen wins, six losses, one draw. Forty years old. Huge, huge favorite. Minus six fifty. I mean, you can't even bet this. These are the kind of things that I've, I've found, and you can go back in my videos. He'll be the number one pick, huge favorite, and something goes wrong, and they lose. Right. This is probably not going to happen in this case. Stephen Thompson is 40 years old. I highly doubt he's going to be able to pull this off against this young guy who's really strong, good on the ground, great striker, can absorb punishment. And uh, Stephen Thompson, I don't think he's going to KO him. And even if he rocks Rachmanov, I think Rachmanov will be able to survive it. He's young, he's strong, he'll be able to pull this off. I mean, it's got to be a super fluke, one of those super flukes. But I, I, I just don't see it. Rachmanov is better everywhere. Stephen Thompson is 40 years old. 
it does it's not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna happen. There's a reason why you minus six fifty. I mean, but this is famous last word famous last words. We've seen minus six fifties before and they've lost, and they've lost for me, which sucks. So one thing I learned is that minus six fifty, there's no value here. Don't bet on them, <laughs> you know. Don't put them in a parlay because I did that one time with another guy. Um, <laughs> don't want to bond theme. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> should have avoided that one. <laughs> um, yeah, and he fought a forty-year-old guy. So, I mean, there is a chance, right? At minus six fifty, is just not worth it. But Rachmanov should beat him everywhere. He's the new up-and-coming guy, and he's been tested. He's beaten some pretty decent guys. Okay, so he's going to win this. Uh, moving on. Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Royval. Pantoja, five foot five, 67 and a half inch reach, 26 wins, five losses, 33 years old. Brandon Royval, five foot nine, 68 inch reach, 15 wins, six losses, 31 years old. Both are in the prime. Royval, tall, lanky, great choking arms, um, crazy fighter, crazy durability, crazy... Um, gas tank can just keep going and going and going um, I think this is his first five round fight Pantoja I've been saying for a while he's gonna be the next champ he finally became champ and now right away people are like thinking oh Roy Val is gonna come and beat him I mean maybe you know I mean he had a really good battle with Roy Val last time but he ended up submitting him but I think Pantoja is not going to lose this right now. I think he's finally gotten to where he, he's always wanted to go. It took him forever to get there. The UFC took their time putting this guy there. It almost like they were they were almost like they were holding him back so he doesn't come up and beat uh, Moreno and he doesn't come up and beat um, uh, what's it what's his name uh, the guy who moved up to another weight class anyways. Um, so it almost seems like to me they waited way too long to give him a title shot. Like they were holding them back. And uh, I think Pantoja is going to be there for a little bit. Uh, Roy Val, he's got a path to victory. He's going to have to wear down Pantoja and not get caught in a submission. Right? I mean, I bet against Roy Val against um, Nicolau. And Nicolau was going to win that fight by decision, being on the outside, out striking him. And Roy Val uh, threw this flying knee out of nowhere. I mean, frankly, I think it's a little bit of luck catching him just perfectly because Nicolau can't take a shot. He caught him just perfectly and just just enough where it stung him and he got on top of him and they stopped the fight. I, I don't think he lands that knee nine out of ten times. So Roy Val's got a shot here. He's definitely deserving of a shot. These guys at the top echelon all have a chance to win and beat each other. I'm going to go with Pantoja. I think he's going to defend it. I think he's a pretty solid guy. Uh, Roy Val is crazy. He, anything can happen. Like I said, he landed that flying knee, flying knee against Roy Val. Uh, sorry, against Nicolau. So anything can happen. But I think Pantoja is going to win this. I don't think he's going to lose it right now. He's still hungry. Um, moving on. Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington. Leon Edwards, six foot two, six seventy and a half, seventy four inch reach, twenty one wins, three losses, thirty two years old. Colby Covington, five foot eleven, seventy two inch reach, seventeen wins, three losses, thirty five years old. Well, I mean, Leon Edwards beat Usman, and Usman was the best wrestler, great cardio, but he did catch him at the tail end of his career, so. That has to be said. Covington is still at the peak of his game at 35 years old, and he had a really competitive fight against Usman when he was even better at his better part of his career. Covington is going to have, you know, he's close to the same height. Uh, Leon Edwards is going to have a slight reach advantage, which is huge because he is a striker. Covington is going to go relentlessly takedown after takedown after takedown. Leon Edwards has got pretty good takedown defense, but Covington is going to fail 10 times and keep coming. And this fight's going to be a big grind and uh, it's going to be messy. Covington's going to make it messy. He's going to land a few shots. Edwards is going to land the, the few shots as well. Um, Covington's always got a good game plan. He's very dangerous. You know, I'm going to lean Leon Edwards. He's, this is his time. He's got the longer range. He's going to outstrike Covington. I think he's going to be able to fight it off five rounds. If he's got the cardio, he's going to be able to last and hold on because Covington's going to just keep coming. He's not going to stop. 
Uh, Covington's path to victory is to get this guy on the fence, grind out a decision, simple, and, and maybe break Leon Edwards with just the relentlessness. But Leon Edwards has already been through that breaking stage with Usman. I think he's going to be able to hold out on this one. It's going to be a close fight. You know, it's going to be a really close fight. It, it's and this is the, this is the main event and what I've been doing with really close main events I've been 50 50 so I'm I'm picking Leon Edwards but if I have a parlay I'm if I have one with Leon Edwards in it I'm having the identical one with Colby Covington in it just because of the fact that I don't want to be sweating in the last part of the fight uh, I want to enjoy it so and from past experience specifically with um, Adesanya and Strickland. <laughs> The one time I didn't bet it both ways, right? <laughs> Everything was correct until then. The one time I didn't bet it both ways. Nevertheless, let's move to the board. All right. Oh, this is the board I've been working on. Oh, man, it was hard. It was hard. It's hard to work on this board. All right. Again, not financial advice. Bet only what you can afford to lose. These are my recommendations. If you, yeah, you should do your own research. Everyone's got a different opinion about this stuff. Um, and if there is some stuff that coincide with yours, maybe take that as something where you can make, make your own bets, build your own parlays, or you can bet on individual fights. Now, one thing you'll notice, and um, is there's a lot of favorites <laughs> and there are some chances for the underdogs to win i've noted where they are but i'm leaning towards the favorites literally all of them and now this has happened before and people have made fun of me for it and the fight card that i did this before only one underdog had won so it's usually I'm pretty accurate. I'm not picking the favorites just because I want to. It's because I actually think they should have the advantage. But there's going to be a few live dogs here that could pull this off. You know, I mean, you could bet on them and you'll see what I'm saying. It's going to be at the lower. They're, they're all at the lower levels just because if I see any underdogs will have a chance where you can easily pick either one, they'll be at the lower levels just because this makes the board a lot neater, easier to look at. First, most confident Rachmanov should dominate this fight. Minus 650, unbettable. Pantoja should win this fight. First title defense, I can't see him losing. He's still hungry. Uh, Jacoby, way better striker. Minus 290, you know, that's, that's, that's such a high number. You'd like to see him lower, but nevertheless, Jacoby. This is where it gets a little murky. Mitchell, he should win this fight. Only way he's going to lose it is if he gets caught and he loses rounds by a couple of power punches. And that's and, and Emmett, that's the only way Emmett's going to win or steal rounds is through a couple of big shots. That's it. Emmett's on his way out. And it's kind of disappointing to, to say that, but it can happen. Mitchell's going to be the pick. Feely, if he's wrestling, he's dominating this fight. I mean, I could easily swap these ones out and put Mitchell here and Feely here. But if you notice where I have the line, I actually got one, two, three, these, uh, these four together. So either way, I would have had them in, in the same grouping. Um, moving on. Next grouping, uh, Boudet in mid-level. I, I just don't see it. You know, this has happened before where I haven't seen a, a, a new guy coming up. I haven't seen how good he is. And just because of the level of competition he's fighting, that Gazia right there. But I have seen how good Boudet is. And I think he's going to pull this off. Uh, Aldana. Uh, you know what? She had one bad fight. You take out the Nunes fight. And, you know, I mean, she's still a heavy favorite. Still. And I think a lot of... So, uh, I, I think th she's where... I, thought, I think where she is where she's at. A lot of people think she's um, overly favored. I actually think she would have been more heavily favored if, if she had done a better job with Nunes. So, I think she's about right. I mean, I just don't see Rosa doing anything. Uh, Garbrandt, Garbrandt, he was, I had him up here. I, I, this is where I was moving the board around because I just, he, it's so dangerous. I just don't want to be sweating it. I want to have my parlay end here. Then I'll add these ones individually or as a group. 
This is all the ones, if you if, if there's going to be any underdogs winning, it's going to be these guys, right? And Ferguson, maybe I'm biased on this one, but he's a huge underdog. Garbrandt should win this fight. He should be faster. Stay on the outside. Take him down a few times. I'll point Kelleher. Kelleher is going to be dangerous to the guillotine choke. He could take a lot of punches. To, he, he can take a punch to give a punch. And this guy can't take a punch. So Kelleher is going to be a live dog here. There's going to be times where I'm going to actually swap out Kelleher for Brand just because the, uh, if it is in a small parlay, just to get the, the multiplication effect of the plus 155. Nevertheless, Garbrandt is my main pick. He should win this fight. Pimblet Ferguson. I mean, yeah, Pimblet should win this fight. Hoping maybe, maybe I don't know how much of this is uh, fight me hoping. Or, uh, or actual, you know, um, Ferguson having the talent to do it. So, moving on, I don't know who that is, never mind. Uh, moving on to the next fight, Ulan Bekov. Ulan Bekov versus Durden. Um, Ulan Bekov, slight favorite over Durden. I think he's going to be the more dangerous fighter in the in as far as like the grappling exchanges Durden's going to be relentless I mean there's only one path to Durden's victories it's relentless wrestling putting pressure on you taking him on the ground holding him down and just winning rounds um, I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that to Lebekov Lebekov's going to be dangerous um, but like I said if you picked Durden he's 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 a good underdog He's got a great path to victory. It's like Keller. Or, actually, no. These ones are even closer. This one is, uh, as we get to the 50 plus, these ones are even closer. These ones, you could easily pick Durden, as far as I see it. You know, just because of how Elliot did against Ulan Bekov and won that decision, Durden can do the same thing. But I'm going to lean towards Ulan Bekov. If you pick Durden, I wouldn't blame you. At plus 145, you know, definitely. There, there's going to be parlays where I actually pick put Durden in it just as a backup probably after this where I'll be very selective where I put Ulan Bekov and maybe I'll swap out Durden for, for something small just to have a backup plan so that's possible as well but you can do it however you like it I mean this is a coin flip and again O'Neill Lipsky a coin flip it's going to go down to a decision uh, I'm going to say O'Neill's going to win it through volume, but hey, the judges last time gave it to Lipsky for power, even though uh, Gatto had out-volumed her. Edwards, I'm picking both. Like I said, it's going to be a coin flip fight. I want to enjoy the fight. I'm, I'm leaning towards Edwards. He's an underdog. It's going to be a bigger payout. If you pick Covington, I would blame you, definitely. So yeah, so that is what it looks like. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a tough one, maybe a little indecisive on my part, but uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, bet individually or as a parlay, however you like, uh, but like I said, those guys on the bottom, I mean, all those underdogs have a path to victory. I mean, everyone has a path to victory in a fight game, but these guys have a... a, a a strong path to victory where when I'm picking, I'm picking with low confidence just because the other guys, I mean, you could easily pick the other guys. And um, and they're all underdogs. So, I mean, remember what I said is uh, if it's going to get that close, you can easily pick the underdog and, and still come out way ahead in the long run if you do that, right? So that's why I have them where I could, I'm going to be picking them in a, in, a, in a few spots. So that's why I have them marked down as well. Nevertheless, thank you very much for joining me. Hit the like button if you like the content. Subscribe and you'll get notifications when the videos come out because I'm kind of a little all over the place when they do come out. I hope this helped. This is the last card of the year. I hope it's profitable for everybody. And uh, we might do a recap. Yeah, we we'll, should do a recap next week and because we're not going to be doing any other videos for four weeks. So, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you in the recap and good luck everybody this week.